Hello, and welcome to the Curriculum Development Process Professional Learning Series. The focus of this module is phase four, implementing and monitoring the curriculum. My name is Fox DeMoise, and I'm joined by Misty Higgins. We are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. There are four phases to the CDP and four corresponding modules. Before engaging in module four, we recommend you access the introduction to the curriculum development process and modules one through three to gain a context for the learning that follows. For this module, please make sure you have access to the following documents. The curriculum development process from the model curriculum framework, a copy of the participant handout to hold your thinking throughout the module, and the CDP self-assessment tool, which you will use at the end to, act to assess where your district may be in relation to the essential elements of phase four. All materials are hyperlinked on the slide for easy access. Before we move into phase four content, it will be helpful for you to establish a baseline level of understanding. Look briefly at the name of phase four, implement and monitor the curriculum and its four steps. Next, consider our learning goal. We are learning about the importance of, of clear plans for implementation and ongoing professional learning to support teachers and leaders in curriculum implementation. This information will be helpful on the next slide when we activate background knowledge you might have about this fourth phase of a curriculum process and is also available at the top of your participant handout. We will use a no need to know approach for activating background knowledge. First, note things you may already know about our learning goal, perhaps using the title and steps of phase four for added insight. As we are beginning, this can certainly include hunches you may have as well. Next, infer things that may be important for you to find out based on our learning goal, things you may need to know. Both what you may know and what you may need to know here at the beginning can be recorded in the table on page one of your participant handout. As the module unfolds, Hold these lists in mind. You will be invited to update them during midpoint and closing reflections. After capturing what you may know and need to know, please synthesize your sense of overall understanding using the one through five scale provided. This too will be revisited during the closing reflection. Pause the video and restart after completing the self-assessment. Now that you have a preliminary sense of where you might be relative to our learning goal, let's move into success criteria for module four. Our success criteria are examine the role of implementation science and high quality professional learning supports in, in effectively implementing a local curriculum, identify key actions and products of phase four of the curriculum development process, access resources to support implementation of phase four of the curriculum development process, and develop an action plan for implementing phase four at the local level. We will begin by taking up the first success criterion examine the role of implementation science and high quality professional learning supports in effectively implementing a local curriculum. Let's start with taking a look at the idea of implementation science. Take a moment to examine this quote and then think about a word or phrase that stands out to you as most interesting or important and why. We know implementation matters because it's what moves the process from developing the curriculum and selecting the high quality instructional resource to teachers having the required materials and effectively using them in the classroom to improve student outcomes. While it's important to take time to thoroughly develop a local curriculum and select the associated high quality instructional resources, it will not change student outcomes if we don't approach the actual implementation of them as even more critical. The practices and challenges associated with implementation are not new and not unique to education, let alone curriculum. There's comfort in knowing some research has been done to figure out principles and best practices when it comes to implementing new initiatives and products. Research shows people move through fairly predictable stages when implementing a new initiative. The concerns-based adoption model, or CBAM, may be one way of illustrating this that you have seen before. The seven stages of concern found within this model is a potentially useful way of locating where people within an organization are relative to an incoming initiative. Having a sense of where people are in their subjective awareness and processing of change can help leadership teams proactively anticipate what may be encountered as implementation unfolds and can normalize the challenges the district will likely experience. 
And when it comes to curriculum work in your districts, you will likely find sentiments that do not fall exactly among these seven. Maybe things like, I'm not sure why a new curriculum resource is being, bought, is being brought to us. What's wrong with the curriculum we've created? But again, those are typical levels of concern teachers may experience and points to the need of specific leadership actions to build the rationale and provide implementation supports to help alleviate these common concerns. Implementation of any new initiative also follows predictable stages from program installation, initial implementation to full operation, and finally, to innovation and sustainability of the initiative. This slide from the Council of Chief State School Officers places those typical stages into the context of implementing a new curriculum and HQIR. One important thing to note on this slide is that to move to sustaining, to sustaining it is a three plus year process. Take just a minute to read across each stage and how that applies to a curricular context. Okay, <clears throat> let's briefly focus on year one. Teachers have access to the curriculum and HQIR probably sounds about right. And early excitement and successes are tempered by fear of change, inertia, and early challenges likely does too. Looking ahead then, the questions become, what is the expertise and professional learning that supports people in moving through these stages as efficiently and effectively as possible? What will help them tackle the challenges they are likely to face? And what can you do as a district or building leader to provide or incentivize the necessary professional learning supports? In this slide from Rivet Education, if we focus on the professional learning aspect of curriculum implementation, it could lay out like this. Notice that year one moves from launching the curriculum and HQIR in the program installation stage and into initial implementation focused on ongoing professional learning for teachers somewhere before the end of the first semester. From there, it's important to note that while there is something of a continuum when it comes to the types of professional learning defined in this framework, we shouldn't view all four, all four types as a single neat progression. Launch PL will need to be repeated for educators who are using the curriculum and HQR, HQIR for the first time each year because they are new to the school district or just teaching a different grade level. Additionally, systems design and leadership support, support happen all the time running parallel to launch an ongoing PL for teachers and requires regular attention, maintenance, and improvement as leaders work to create the conditions necessary for effective classroom implementation. We know that that was a lot of information, so we want to pause and give you an opportunity to process the slides around implementation science. Individually determine which two ideas from the slides seem most important given your district or school context at this point. You will likely want to bookmark this section to revisit as you move closer to developing your actual implementation plan. Capture your thinking in the space provided under success criterion one on your participant handout. So pause the video and restart once you have captured your two most important points on your handout. Now that we have spent some time looking at implementation science, we're going to look at the second half of our first success criterion that focuses on the high quality professional learning supports that are necessary for effective curriculum implementation with the focus on three areas, launch PL support for teachers, ongoing PL support for teachers, and design system and leadership supports. As you listen and view the next few slides, we invite you to individually note key ideas on the professional learning supports that could make curriculum implementation more effective in your district in the space provided under Success Criterion 1 on your participant handout. The high quality professional learning supports necessary for effective curriculum implementation starts with PL supports for teachers as you launch the new curriculum. The focus during this phase is on initial training teachers need to develop an understanding of how to skillfully implement the curriculum as intended. Launch PL generally takes place before the start of the school year and throughout the first few weeks of school. As mentioned earlier, this PL would need to be repeated each year of implementation as a part of onboarding new staff or staff new to a particular grade level. Launch PL focuses on ensuring educators understand the approach and design of the curriculum, the HQIR, and what strong implementation looks like. 
They are given time to internalize early units and lessons within the curriculum to prepare for the start of the school year, and they are provided support on any logistical and technological aspects required to effectively use the HQIR. Ongoing professional learning is designed to support teachers in skillfully using the curriculum and HQIR to provide more equitable learning environments for all students through improved classroom instruction and support. This type of PL takes place in an ongoing way over time and often occurs through coaching, PLCs, workshops, and observing model classrooms. The goal is to create curricular coherence across the school and district. Ongoing PL focuses on supporting teachers as they internalize units and lessons while anticipating student thinking and responses, and it equips teachers in leveraging the HQIR embedded supports to address diverse student needs. Remember, running parallel to teacher PL is support for leaders as they examine how well school and district level policies, structures, and procedures support effective implementation of the curriculum and HQIR. This help ensures there aren't things in place that send mixed messages to teachers, encouraging them to alter resources in ways that can unravel what made the resource high quality to begin with. This ongoing support includes both school and district leaders, as well as instructional coaches, and is also designed to happen year over year, providing leaders an opportunity to reflect on implementation progress and make adjustments based on learning and the needs of their teachers and students. PL for Leadership is designed to build their understanding of what strong implementation looks like and prepare them to build coherence. It equips leaders with what they need to provide high quality professional learning to their staff and to allocate the critical resources and time needed for effective implementation. We want to give you a chance to process our first success criterion. So look back at the notes you individually captured on your participant handout. So from the range of potentially new ideas that surface from this section, discuss what stood out to you as most important regarding implementation science and professional learning supports that could make curriculum implementation more effective in your district. If there are more than five or six in your group, consider forming two or more teams. Also, feel free to capture any new thinking from your discussion under Success Criterion 1 on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after your team discussion. Let's move into our second success criterion, where we want you to be able to identify key actions and products of Phase 4 of the CDP. Phase four focuses on curriculum implementation and monitoring. The four steps of this phase include setting implementation goals, providing ongoing professional learning, gathering data to monitor progress, and analyzing data and making necessary adjustments. One important point to reemphasize from our learning around implementation in science is that curriculum implementation is a multi-year process, and it can take three plus years to get to the point of sustainability and refinement of the work. It is not just about doing these steps in year one and stopping. It is about continuously improving each year throughout implementation as you move closer and closer to the articulated instructional vision. Phase four is grounded in the, in the graphic on this slide to illustrate that implementation is about continuous improvement as you move through the cycle each year of implementation. We wanna pause and give you a chance to read through phase four. As you read, focus on the key actions and products of each step of the phase. If accessing the electronic version, simply go to the table of contents in the CDP document and click on phase four, and that will take you to the start of this section. Feel free to annotate directly on the text and space is provided under success criterion two on the participant handout to capture your thinking. As you read, focus on the text and the key questions for each step of phase four. We will take a closer look at the key tools a little later in the session. So pause the video and restart after you have read phase four and captured your thinking on the handout. Now that you have read phase four, we wanna give you an opportunity to process what you read with your team. Discuss each step in order, focusing on the key actions and products. Make sure to equitably share talk time as you ask each other clarifying questions and make connections to how you, are currently, how you currently approach curriculum implementation and monitoring in your district or school. Also, you can capture any new ideas and or questions from your discussion on your participant handout. So pause the video and restart after the team discussion. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share out to hear from everyone. What thoughts, ideas, connections or questions do you have regarding phase four of the curriculum development process? 
Pause the video and restart after the whole group share out. This is the longest module in the professional learning series, and the opening segment has been particularly content heavy. If splitting this module over two sessions, we suggest stopping the video here. If continuing, you may pause the video now for a short break and we will restart with taking a closer look at key leadership actions to support the first year of implementation. We want to spend some time taking a, a closer look at key leadership actions that support the first year of implementation. These year one actions are taken from the Rivet framework shared earlier, and we just spread them across the year on a timeline. Take a minute to read over the key actions. So let's focus here on the first column. As you read in phase four from the CDP, it is critically important to set clear implementation goals and to develop an aligned high quality professional learning plan to support effective implementation and continuous improvement. Also looking across the table, you can see high quality professional learning is a linchpin for the actions in the summer and year long categories. Let's take a, let's take a closer look at what these two key actions might look like in year one of implementation. We want to ensure we set implementation goals to measure successes and impacts in the curriculum's first year of use. This chart summarizes different types of implementation goals, the key question we'd be seeking to answer, and the methods to measure the goal. Take a minute to review the chart. We want to point out there are many methods to measure goals depending on the type of goals, such as surveys, observations, and analysis of student work. You may or may not set a goal in each of these categories. Here is an example of year one goals and how they seek to measure different things from different groups aligned to common indicators for early implementation. This example includes student outcome goals, teacher and leadership outcomes, as well as a goal around beliefs and mindsets. We don't need to get too caught up in the numbers here, they're just samples. Take a minute to review the sample goals. A few things to note. Student outcome goals are important to have. In this case, the district will be following students in a sample group to track their growth over the year. There is some vertical alignment in the teacher and leadership outcomes. In order to understand if teachers are using the high quality instructional resource as intended, leaders do have to observe their practices. We also want to ensure leaders do something with the data, which would inform teacher supports and professional learning. The beliefs and mindsets goal can be important to understand how they are changing over time. Often we, we may see that some teachers with reluctant or resistant mindsets they show those while they are struggling with early implementation, but after sticking with it and seeing student outcomes change, there is a shift in their mindsets and support of the curriculum and the HQIR emerges. Let's move to the other key leadership action for early implementation, providing ongoing high quality professional learning aligned to your implementation goals. During early implementation, vendors will also or often include professional learning with the sale of the resource. Prioritize these opportunities to support leaders and educators as they become familiar with the resources and their intended uses. We also suggest starting with making sure teachers can navigate the resources and find everything they need, then build skill around use of materials. Many vendors will also include follow-up professional learning after a time of initial implementation. This is a good opportunity to capitalize on during the school year. Throughout the first year of implementation, document questions, concerns, etc. For example, pacing is a common one to discuss at follow-up sessions with the vendor. When planning professional learning, consider the different structures at your disposal, which may include teacher or leader PLC time, uh, school professional learning time, as well as district professional learning days. Once you have set clear implementation goals and developed the professional learning plan, these are used to drive work for the rest of the year. 
Going back to earlier slides from Rivet, you can see key leadership actions in summer and early fall of year one are focused on providing professional learning to build educators' understanding of the curriculum and HQIR in preparation for the start of the school year. Throughout the first year of implementation, leaders need to ensure systems and structures are in place to provide teachers the time, space, and professional learning supports necessary through focused workshops, coaching, and PLCs. It is also important for leaders to elevate bright spots and to identify and leverage model classrooms for teachers to see strong exa examples of classroom implementation and action. So as you think back over the last few slides, which key leadership actions resonate most with you that you may want to em emphasize to strengthen year one curriculum implementation in your district? We would like you, for you to first individually capture your thinking around these two questions in the space provided under success, success criterion two on the participant handout. Then have a team discussion ensuring each person has an opportunity to share their thinking. Add any new thinking from the team discussion to the same space on the handout. So pause the video and restart after you have individually responded to the question and wrapped up your team discussion. OK, we are at the midpoint of the module, so we want to pause and give you a chance to reflect. Based on your learning so far, what might, I, you, what might you now add to your no need to know table at the top of your participant handout? This can include transferring items from your need to know to your no list when appropriate. So please pause the video and restart once you have added your thinking to the no need to know table. Let's move into the third success criterion that you can access resources to support implementation of phase four of the curriculum development process. While there are several tools included in the CDP, we do want to take a little time to highlight a few of those key tools that may be most useful in supporting the work. In public education, the value of effective goal setting is clear. When the right goals have been decided upon and they are clear, actionable, and measurable, improvement is more likely to follow, generally speaking, and with regard to curriculum implementation. The Setting Implementation Goals template is a straightforward tool to guide your goal setting for each year of implementation. Once goals are set, planning how to best monitor progress is critical. The monitoring plan template is a tool designed to support establishing an effective implementation monitoring plan. The CDP also includes sample goals and different approaches to monitoring districts may want to consider. Once drafted, it is important to communicate the goals and monitoring plan to stakeholders in order to gather input and help set clear expectations for the upcoming year. That high quality professional learning is an engine for continuous improvement is a point that we have tried to make throughout this module. The curric or curriculum implementation professional learning plan tool helps guide PL planning by focusing on key logistics, including the structure of the PL, identification of key outcomes, and other important considerations. Again, it is also important to involve stakeholders in the creation of the PL plan and to communicate it in a timely manner to stakeholder groups once a draft is ready. All learners need quality feedback. Educators implementing a new uh, curriculum are no exception. So in the CDP, coaching has been broadly defined as targeted interaction potentially offered by a variety of role groups to support educators in curriculum implementation. This can include the intellectual prep of helping teachers tailor unit and lesson plans, reflecting with teachers after a lesson or unit, and observing teachers as they facilitate learning in the classroom. The curriculum coaching observation template is intended primarily to help calibrate classroom cons or I'm sorry, observations. It suggests a range of potential observation focuses and has places to hold notes, share thoughts and pose questions. Scheduling time to step back and formally assess progress is essential. The CDP recommends doing this quarterly and yearly. Each step back has some similar components and some that shift um, as more information accrues. The quarterly step back agenda tool suggests potential goals for the meeting and offers what might occur during its various segments. The end of year step back tool emphasizes analysis of summative data and data not available during the school year to identify successes and challenges to plan for the following year. In addition to the key tools, the CDP also contains an appendix and toolkit that provide more support for implementing each phase. The phase four toolkit includes the professional learning module and associated resources, sample artifacts from districts around the state, and video clips from districts sharing their experiences they work through the process. 
One resource from the third column is the Rivet Professional Learning Partner Guide. It offers school systems a searchable database of national and local PL providers to support implementation of HQIRs, and its evaluations can help find providers that meet the KDE characteristics of high quality professional learning. We do want to take a minute just to show you a couple of the artifacts that are included in the toolkit for phase four. This is an example of year one implementation goals from Perry County. Their template reflects an effective blend of precise goal setting, aligned measurement metrics, and appropriate frequency. This year one professional learning plan example is also from Perry County. It shows thoughtful consideration of probable focuses and needed outcomes, suitable structures and audience for the PL, and related logistics like timeframes, responsible parties, and funding sources. We want to give you an opportunity to explore phase four tools and resources. You may want to some, spend some time exploring individually or with your team. As you explore, focus on which tools and resources may be most beneficial to supporting the work of phase four and what are maybe some tools and resources still needed to support phase four. You can hold your thinking in the space provided under success criteria and three of the participant handout. Pause now and start the video after your individual exploration and capturing your thinking on your participant handout. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share out to hear from everyone. So during your exploration, which tools and resources did you feel will be most beneficial? And what were maybe some tools and resources that you noted are still needed to support phase four? Pause the video and restart after the team discussion. We've arrived at our last success criteria and we want to provide you time to begin to develop an action plan for implementing phase four at the local level. Before thinking through your action plan, let's pause for a final reflection to anchor learning from the session so you can move it forward in application. Go back to your no need to know table on page one of your participant handout. Review the items on your no list and update as needed. When you look back over the list, which item seems most important for you to remember? Then review the items on your need to know list and again update as needed. Deter determine which item seems most important to address in supporting implementation of phase four in your district. Record, record both of those items in the space provided under success criterion four on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after completing this portion of the final reflection. Lastly, we want, to, we want you to reassess your overall level of understanding of the learning goal after engaging in the mod module on that scale of one to five. Determine your rating now in the space provided under success criterion four. So pause the video and restart after completing the second portion of the final reflection. To help you determine possible next steps, we recommend you complete the section of the CDP self-assessment tool focused on essential element four, plan for implementation and progress monitoring. The element is divided into three indicators, 4A focused on clear implementation goals and progress monitoring, 4B providing ongoing PL, and 4C gathering and analyzing data to make adjustments. Each indicator is broken down into specific criteria necessary for supporting that element with a space for you to give a rating on a scale of one being not present in our district to three being fully present and systematic in our district. Again, this may help you pinpoint specific aspects of phase four you want to prioritize as a part of your action plan. With your district teams, use a participant handout to begin thinking about possible next steps, completion dates, supporting resources, responsibilities, and support you'll need for implementing phase four back in your district. The planning template is at the end of the participant handout. Finally, we ask that you take time to complete the short professional learning survey to provide feedback on module four. An ELO certificate is available and can be accessed at the end of the survey. Please feel free to reach out to Mr. or to me with any questions you may have. Thank you for participating in module four of the curriculum development process professional learning series.